Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jonathan here with another Twin Motion video. And today we've got some really exciting news. Another new version of Twin Motion just dropped recently. We've now got the 2025 Preview 1 version that has just been released in the launcher in the last few days. So we're going to take a look at this amazing new version and the features and what it means for you as a designer using Twin Motion. So first of all, if you do want to go and find out a bit more about Twin Motion, I recommend going to the documentation page. You'll find out some information about the Twin Motion 2024 release as well. But if you really want to find out about the new release, the 2025 version, just go to documentation and then just go down to release notes. And here we can see 2025.1, the preview version with all the new features listed. Now there's a ton of new features here. I'm always blown away by what Twin Motion pack into their new versions. And to begin with, a really exciting redesign of the environment tab. So we're going to take a look at this in this video today, and that's the main thing I'm going to focus on. Um, I'll be covering the other features in videos further down the line for you, but this is by far the biggest feature. So basically what you can see is we've got lots of really nice presets for things like weather now, and you'll see how this unfolds. But one of the killer things that I absolutely love is volumetric clouds. And wait until you see what this does for your dynamic skies and how this works. We've also got some really nice new fog settings and additional settings for things like sun and sky. And of course, things like the weather is now separated from the time of year as well. So you have a lot more flexibility with the way you create your scenes and things like different seasons as well. Now, some other really cool you know, features that I will be covering in future videos, as I say, but let's focus on the main big feature, which is the new environment tab and the new weather features and wait until you see this incredible new dynamic sky in action. So here's the new features with a load of bug fixes as well. So as ever, uh, Twin Motion just marches on to be better and better. So exciting news. I'm actually running Twin Motion here on my new M4 Max laptop that I just got. And this is plugged into my three 32 inch 4K screens. And you know, the frame rate is pretty good, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm really, really pleasantly surprised by how well Twin Motion is being handled on this new Mac laptop. You know, when you compare it to things like RTX graphics cards, obviously, you know, they have a bit more power, but the new Mac laptop has 32 GPU cores, and as you can see, it's responding very, very nicely and very interactively to my changes. Okay, so let's get back to these features on the video. So the very first thing you'll notice is that you've actually got an environment preset function now. So this is really cool. It means that you can basically select from a good starting point under the ambience, you can click. So for example, let's have a look at some of these. Um, there's a kind of like a lunar one, there's a default one, a sunny coast, and you know some of the other things like golden hour as well. So these are really quite a nice little starting point for you to kind of set your scenes up. And what I really like about these as well is you can actually set your own default here too. So very, very cool. Now I've just gone and turned Lumen on. Um, of course on the Mac, we don't have path tracing, but with Lumen being there, the rendering is pretty much as good as path tracing, I would say, without the penalty of the speed. So now it's very easy as ever it was before to adjust things like the time of day, but we have a whole bunch of additional settings. Uh, there's one here called turbidity. And this is kind of like how much atmosphere there is in the sky. You also can alter the color temperature. And this is quite different to the hue and saturation. This is actually the temperature of the uh, weather in the sky system. So basically you can play around with these and get some really nice fine adjustments to your scene. But the one that I really, really love is the new clouds. So let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. So I'm gonna start off with the 2D clouds. Um, so I'm in dynamic sky and you can see I can just basically change the slider. Let's pan around so we get a view a bit more sky. Basically move that kind of slider here from clear sky through to a bit more cloudy, through to pretty overcast. And you can see the lighting changes in real time as you would expect very, very nicely. So really, really nice level of control. But now we have complete control over the season. Okay, and that is now independent from the temperature as well. So you can see that as soon as I get to a snowy level, you know, the snowman there, that indicates snow. And I always love these scenes in twin motion, particularly around Christmas time in the UK. It gets very, very icy and snowy 
and you know, it looks absolutely stunning to create your visuals and your projects using these methods. So really, really nice new settings. Um, we've got lots of additional settings. You can actually turn off precipitation now. So if you don't want the snow falling, you can just create that nice sunny scene with the ice on that water and that lake uh, without actually having to have the snow falling as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create an image for that. I like that image a lot. I'll come back and render one of these out later. Um, and let's just go back and save that as a default. So basically by clicking on the plus sign, I can now save that as my own default that I can recall at any time. Now that is pretty amazing. That means that it will really save me time when I come to set up future scenes and I get those perfect settings that I want to kind of recreate. So very, very nice indeed. Okay, so let's scroll down a bit further. You can see we've also got uh, some really nice new settings for the wind in there. So we can increase the wind and the sway. Some of these were in the future version before, but you know, these have been refined in 2025 by look of things as well. Um, I also really like things like the fog density. That adds quite a bit of realism to your design um, and just gives that nice sort of misty look. <laughs> just don't go a bit too foggy as I've done here. Okay, so let's turn the fog off for a moment. We'll pan around for a different view and, you know, really just getting you a feel for how kind of nice and smooth this is on my M4 Max laptop, especially with the 32 inch screen plugged in as well. OK, so I'm really enjoying the new cloud setting. But what I want to do now is just adjust that time of day. And I'm going to go and show you how we do the volumetric clouds in a moment. So we will just kind of tweak our settings here and let's go down to clouds. And this time let's turn on volumetric clouds. So once those clouds form in the sky, you can literally see them forming as volumes up in the sky there. And what this does, it creates much more kind of realistic shadows uh, because the cloud actually blocks the sunlight as it falls onto the ground. So look at the things like the reflections in the water and the reflections in the skylights and the windows and the glass. So they've got an amazing job on these kind of volumetric clouds. And this kind of level of control was just something that really wasn't possible in previous versions of Twin Motion. You know, you had a kind of slider with some basic cloud settings, but that was pretty much it. So you had to rely on HDRIs a lot more. Um, and there were some downsides in using HDRI and that you couldn't always get the complete environment you wanted. Really, I now think the dynamic sky in Twin Motion 2025 is going to mean that we'll, you know, maybe ease off the HDRI backgrounds and start using that dynamic sky a bit more as well. And um, also the benefit with the dynamic sky is it can be affected by things like the wind as well. So you get that kind of subtle movement of those clouds during the time of day. So let's go ahead and kind of like check out the standard rendering compared to the lumen rendering. And you know, you can see a huge difference, particularly in things like the reflections on those lakes with those new volumetric clouds as well. And here we go with my preset. Um, so if I do want to kind of apply my preset, I can basically just go up to the environment tab and basically scroll up. And here is my HDRI that I could also set up here. So with the HDRIs, there's a whole bunch of these available in Twin Motion. Now they're quite large and you do need to download some of these. So they take a little while to load in, but they're about 29, 30 megabytes. And you just have to kind of wait for the Lumen to recalculate uh, while the HDRI kind of does the rendering. But overall, if you do go to the library, there's a very substantial library of HDRIs built into Twin Motion these days. And um, as I say, you just need to kind of take the time to download your favorites and use those. So good old HDRIs are definitely worth still using. But I think now, uh, honestly, with the new kind of settings for the dynamic sky, you know, we'll be using this a lot more. OK, so I just want to kind of hop into another project. Uh, this is one that I did many years ago. Uh, like a falling water recreation and it was an old model actually that I opened up from three or four years ago in the early twin motion and actually everything came through really well so you know this was a good little test for me and here you can see that I was able to apply the style from a previous project in there as well so there's my kind of style added to that new visual and here we are in full screen mode just moving around that environment in real time and I think you'll agree, twin motion in full screen mode looks absolutely amazing. And, you know, what? Well, imagine this as a way to present to your clients your design proposal, you know, particularly if it's a sort of Christmas presentation and you want to put that snow effect on as well. Um, it really is an amazing piece of software. 
So just a little aside, if you haven't already downloaded Twinmotion, I recommend definitely getting it. Um, for some of you, it's free. Uh, have a look at the terms and conditions. But if you want the full version, I'm a reseller for Twinmotion globally. So reach out to me and I can help. But the most important thing, of course, is teaching and training. So yes, while Twinmotion is easy to learn on one level, uh, I would love to help you all over the world with my global Zoom training, really master Twinmotion quickly and rapidly and making the most of it. So as you can see, we've been just playing around with the kind of like view of this falling water project and, you know, really having a bit of fun with the new dynamic sky. It's all looking really exciting with the clouds and things like the smoke and those birds moving around. Look at those volumetric clouds there and basically the way that they actually interact with the lighting in the model as well. So, you know, what do you think, guys? I think the new dynamic sky is unbelievable. And I'm quite excited to be able to kind of look forward to doing some animations in the future using this new dynamic sky to change my weather uh, in a much more realistic way than I could with HDRIs. So there's all sorts of controls, as you can see, um, you know, things like the vertical extent, the flat bottom, the amount of puffiness in Cirrus as well. So jump into Twinmotion 2025 and I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye.